Welcome back to the LLM Research and Investigations Podcast made by Alex H. Glad to be back. Today, uh, we're diving into some pretty unusual source material. Okay. We've got a collection of discussions uh, between different large language models. Oh, wow. All analyzing a U.S. patent for a spacecraft propulsion system. Interesting. I know it sounds like something straight out of science fiction. Yeah. But that's what makes this so intriguing. I can see that. It really highlights how LLMs can go beyond just generating text. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, it can actually engage with technical information mm -hmm. and analyze it from different angles. Yeah. It's like having a team of AI researchers. Right. All focused on this one patent. Oh, cool. So let's set the stage. Okay. The patent in question. Okay. The patent in question number... 6745019A1 right. describes a triangular spacecraft. Triangular spacecraft. Now, this isn't just a random shape. Right. The patent proposes a system where charged plates on the corners of the triangle mm. create electrostatic fields, while slot antennas generate electromagnetic waves. Okay. And the big claim is that this interaction between electrostatic and electromagnetic fields Yeah could potentially manipulate space-time curvature. Wow. Leading to a new form of propulsion. That's pretty out there. It's a bold concept yeah. that definitely caught the LLM's uh, attention. For sure. Space-time curvature. That's venturing into some pretty advanced physics. Absolutely. I'm really curious to hear how the LLMs tackled that aspect. Well, some of them went straight to the heart of the matter, uh -huh. questioning the scientific validity. For yeah. instance, one LLM, okay. Phi 3.5, okay. pointed out that the patent's claims regarding space-time curvature okay. don't seem to align with our current understanding of general relativity. Oh, interesting. It's like the AI is saying, hold on, the physics here might not add up. So we've got AI fact-checking a patent on a physics level. Exactly. That's pretty impressive. It really is. Absolutely. Another LLM, okay. Granite 3.1 Dense, mm -hmm. raised a fascinating point. Okay. It suggested that the patent's concept might be more rooted in classical electromagnetism uh -huh. than general relativity. Interesting. It even recommended looking into Maxwell's equations, oh. which describe how electric and magnetic fields interact oh. to see if there's any basis for the patent's claims. So basically going back to the fundamentals. It's like they're saying, let's dig into the fundamentals of electromagnetism mm -hmm. yeah. and see if this idea holds water. Yeah, exactly. Did any of the LLMs delve into the engineering challenges of actually yeah. building this triangular spacecraft? Oh, yeah. Because let's face it, uh -huh. space-time curvature is one thing. Yeah. But turning that into a functioning spacecraft mm -hmm. is a whole other ball game. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Several LLMs went deep into the feasibility of the design. Okay. For example, Llama 2 yeah. highlighted the immense material challenges right. to generate the kind of electrostatic fields described in the patent. Yeah. You'd need materials with exceptional dielectric strength. Mm. Dielectric yeah. strength basically means yeah. how well a material can withstand high voltages without breaking down. Okay. So if the materials can't handle a voltage, right. you could end up with a very expensive and very short-lived spacecraft. A very big firework. Did any of the LLMs offer potential solutions to these material challenges? Well, one LLM suggested breaking down the engineering hurdles into smaller, mm. more manageable chunks. Uh -huh. It recommended focusing on specific areas like material selection, okay. power generation, right. antenna design, mm -hmm. and thermal management. Yeah. by tackling these individual components. Right. The LLM proposed a more systematic approach to assessing the spacecraft's feasibility. It's like they're saying, yeah. let's not get overwhelmed by the sheer scale of the project. Uh -huh. Let's break it down into solvable problems. All right, take it step by step. I know a lot of our listeners are interested in the cutting edge of LLM research. Just... And I highly recommend checking out lmresearch.net for even more fascinating deep dives into this world. It's a great resource. But getting back to our triangular spacecraft, yeah, did any of the LLMs address how this thing would actually be powered? That's a good question. You bring up a critical point. One LLM specifically calculated the line charge density uh -huh. required to generate the proposed electrostatic fields, uh -huh. and it flagged it as potentially impossible to achieve. Wow. 
It also pointed out that the sheer power requirements for such a system would be astronomical. Economical. Questioning what kind of spacecraft power source could even handle that. Yeah. It's like they were looking at the energy demands and saying, okay, even if we could build this, where are we going to get enough juice to make it work? But it wasn't all doom and gloom. Right. Some LLMs actually drew parallels to existing propulsion technologies like ion thrusters. Right. Ion thrusters use electric fields to accelerate ions and create thrusts. Yeah. Are they suggesting this triangular spacecraft is basically a giant super-powered ion thruster? Mm -hmm. Not quite. The LLMs acknowledge that this patent goes way beyond current ion thruster technology. However, they did suggest that maybe, just maybe, there are some principles in this patent that could inspire improvements to existing propulsion systems. It's like they were saying, look, this idea might be a long shot, but let's not dismiss it entirely. There might be some valuable nuggets of insight here. So even if we never see a giant triangle spaceship zipping through the cosmos, yes. this patent could still contribute to advancements in space exploration? That's pretty cool. It really highlights the potential of LLMs to not just analyze information, but also to spark new ideas and connect seemingly disparate concepts. It's like they're helping us see the world, and in this case, the universe, with fresh eyes. Now, I know we've been diving deep into the technical aspects, but I'm curious about the public perception angle. If something shaped like a giant triangle suddenly appeared in the sky, I think people might have some strong reaction. Yeah. That's a great point, and the LLMs actually picked up on that as well. Multiple LLMs recognized the resemblance to popular UFO imagery and how this patent could easily be misinterpreted or even fuel conspiracy theories. So we've got AI predicting potential social reactions to a technology that might not even exist. That's kind of mind-blowing. It is. And it underscores the importance of clear communication, especially when dealing with complex and potentially sensational topics. One LLM specifically highlighted the need to separate the factual information in the patent from speculative interpretations. It's like they were saying, let's stick to the science and avoid jumping to conclusions about extraterrestrial visitors. Right. Let's not let our imaginations run wild just because a patent mentions a triangle-shaped spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Speaking of wild imaginations, did any of the LLMs dig into any previous research that might relate to this triangular spacecraft concept? Some of them did. They scoured scientific literature looking for any breadcrumbs that might connect to this idea. Now, no one else has tried to build a warp drive triangle, but they did uncover some interesting connections. For instance, one LLM found a 2016 article in Physics Letters that explored the possibility of generating space-time curvature using charged particle beams. Okay, so not a spaceship, but at least is dealing with the same mind-bending physics. Did that article support the patent's claims? Well, the article concluded that there were significant practical limitations to generating space-time curvature with particle beams. But, and this is key, it at least suggested that the idea wasn't entirely outlandish. It showed that serious scientists were and still are exploring the fringes of physics looking for ways to manipulate space-time. So maybe our patent inventor wasn't completely off base, they were just perhaps a bit ahead of their time. Perhaps. Another LLM took a different approach, diving into the history of attempts to develop similar technologies. It highlighted how those past failures, while discouraging, could actually provide valuable insights into the potential pitfalls of this triangular spacecraft concept. It's like they're saying, hey, people have tried this sort of thing before, and here's where they went wrong. Let's not repeat those mistakes. That's a really valuable perspective. Learning from past failures is a cornerstone of scientific progress. Did any of the LLMs go so far as to look into the background of the patent inventor themselves? Maybe they could shed some light on the inspiration for this let's call it unique concept. Actually, yes, some LLMs did delve into the inventor's history. They were trying to uncover any previous work or publications that might give clues about their expertise and motivations. It was like they were conducting a background check to see if this patent was a continuation of previous research or a sudden out of the blue idea. It adds another layer to the analysis. Mm -hmm. We're not just evaluating the patent in isolation. Mm -hmm. We're considering the person behind it, their background, their potential influences. Yeah. This is getting pretty deep, even for a deep dive. But yeah. You know, for anyone who's finding this discussion fascinating, I encourage you to check out LMNResearch.net. They've got a wealth of information and resources on the latest advancements in LLM technology. It's a fantastic resource for anyone wanting to explore the world of LLMs and their growing impact on various fields. It's like they were trying to piece together, you know, like uh, where this idea came from yeah. and see if it was, you know, like based on other research or if it was just totally brand new. Totally out there. Yeah, exactly. So after all this analysis, yeah. what's the verdict? Yeah. What are the big takeaways from this deep dive into 
AI analyzing AI. Well, I think it's safe to say this patent is highly speculative, okay. both in its scientific basis and its engineering feasibility. Ah. The LLMs consistently raised red flags, pointing out inconsistencies with established physics and highlighting the immense technological hurdles. But it wasn't all negative, right? Right. The LLMs also found some potentially valuable insights. Absolutely. Even if it's unlikely we'll ever see a giant triangle spaceship. Yeah, I think one of the key takeaways is the sheer potential of LLMs. Okay. They're not just like repeating information they've been trained on. Yeah. They're actively engaging with complex concepts, yeah. analyzing them from multiple angles, and even proposing solutions. Right. It's a glimpse into the future of research. Yeah. Where AI could play a really important role in scientific discovery and technological innovation. It's like having a team of brilliant, tireless research assistants working around the clock. Definitely. But these LLMs also demonstrated a healthy dose of skepticism. Yes. Which is crucial in any scientific endeavor. For sure. It's like they didn't just take the patent's word for it. They like really dug into the details, yeah. questioned assumptions, <sighs> and highlighted potential flaws. Right. It's a good reminder that even the craziest ideas deserve careful scrutiny. Yeah. And that critical thinking is essential. Yeah. Whether it's coming from a person or an AI. Absolutely. And let's not forget the LLM's insights into the public perception aspect. Oh, right. They reminded us that technology doesn't exist in a vacuum. It doesn't. We need to consider the social and ethical implications of our inventions, mm. especially when they push the boundaries of what we think is possible. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's a powerful reminder that the development and deployment of new technologies should always be accompanied by thoughtful consideration of their broader impact on society. Absolutely. And if anyone's interested in learning more about this intersection of technology and society, yeah. elmresearch.net is a great resource. It is. They have articles, podcasts, and even online courses that delve into these complex issues. It's a great way to stay informed and engaged with the rapidly evolving world of LLMs and artificial intelligence. So in the end, even though this patent might never leave the realm of science fiction, yeah. It sparked a fascinating conversation. It really did. And highlighted the incredible potential of LLMs to analyze, critique, and even inspire new ideas. It's amazing to think about. It's a testament to the power of AI, not just to process information, but to truly engage with it, to push the boundaries of our understanding, and to help us navigate the complexities of our world. I totally agree. Well, that was a mind-bending journey through the world of triangular spacecraft, space-time curvature, and the ever-expanding capabilities of LLMs. It really makes you think. It just goes to show that even the most out-there ideas can lead to valuable insights and spark important conversations. Definitely. Thanks for listening to LLM Research and Investigations. We'll see you next time for another deep dive into the fascinating world of AI.